In this video, we're going to look at how to rank boiling points from highest to lowest using intermolecular forces. The compounds we're working with today are acetic acid, metal formate, butane, and potassium fluoride. When we're trying to rank the boiling points of compounds, we need to compare apples to apples. All these compounds right here have pretty much the same molar mass. Just in case you don't know what's molar mass, it's the mass for one mole of the compound. So for the four compounds that we have right here, their molar mass ranges from 58 to 60. And that's close enough for us to work with. Now, don't go around comparing apples with bananas. That's the best way to get the wrong answer when it comes to ranking boiling points. An example would be trying to rank the boiling points of HF, HCl, HBr, and HI because their molar mass are different. Now that we know the importance of comparing compounds with similar molar mass, let's rock and roll. Previously, I've posted a video on intermolecular forces, so if you need a refresher on the types of intermolecular forces, you can click on the link. We're going to proceed with you having an idea on what are the intermolecular forces. So let's jump straight into identifying the type of intermolecular forces present in these compounds. We're going to start with acetic acid, and then we'll work our way to potassium fluoride. And before we start, these first three compounds right here, they are covalent compounds, and then potassium fluoride is an ionic compound. That being said, regardless of whether the compound is covalent or ionic, they will all have London dispersion forces. Looking at the structure of acetic acid, we have permanent dipoles between the CO bonds, so that means we have dipole-dipole interaction present in acetic acid. On top of that, notice that we have a hydrogen that is directly connected to oxygen, that's hydrogen bonding right there. So that's pretty much all the intermolecular forces that are present in acetic acid. Let's move on to metal formate. From acetic acid, we see similar patterns appearing. There's that permanent dipole again between carbon and oxygen. So that means we do have dipole-dipole interaction in metal formate. Moving on to butane, let's see what we have. Well, we don't have much to work with. They are all carbons and hydrogens. If we look up the electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen, there's no permanent dipole because the electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen is 0.4. That translates to a nonpolar covalent bond. So that means the bond between carbon and hydrogen is nonpolar. So there's no dipole. So that means London forces is pretty much the only intermolecular force that is present in butane. Last but not least, our simplest compound, Kf. As we've mentioned earlier, Kf is an ionic compound. So that means the intermolecular forces that is present will be ion-ion. Now, just in case you're wondering, like, how did I know Kf is an ionic compound? Well, it's because K is a metal and F is a non-metal. If you need help classifying the elements, I'll link a video on top. And normally, but not always, normally, metals and non-metals come together to form ionic bond, which is present in an ionic compound. Since we're diligent people here, we're going to go ahead and take the extra step and actually calculate out the electronegativity difference between K and F and notice that it comes out to 3.2. That translates to an ionic bond. And just in case you're wondering like how I figure out the type of bond, it's because certain range in the electronegativity difference means certain type of bond that exists between the atoms. Just now we're talking about 3.2 for KF, so that's ionic bond since it's greater than 2. For CH, the difference is 0.4, so that's right here, non-polar. And that's because it's lesser than 0.5. The ranges kind of varies depending on your book or your teacher, so be sure to check on what's the accepted range. These are the values that I go by. So back to our four compounds. Now that we've figured out the intermolecular forces present in each of them, we can now rank the boiling points from highest to the lowest. We do that by looking at the strength of the intermolecular forces. Here's the connection. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the more energy is required to overcome the forces, and that translates to higher boiling point. So in short, shorter IMF equals higher boiling point. IMS is short for intermolecular force. So if you have a working knowledge on IMF, and if you don't, don't worry about it, just watch the video that I've mentioned before. And just to make your life easier, I've summarized it here as well. So we can see that ion-ion is the strongest of them all, and it goes down in the order, making London forces the weakest force. Looking at acidic acid, it has London, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding. So the strongest IMF in acidic acid is going to be hydrogen bonding. For methyl formate, it's going to be dipole-dipole. 
For butane, there's only one, so that's London. And for potassium fluoride, we have two, and ion ion is way stronger than London, so there we go. Now that we've already identified the strongest intermolecular force in each of these compounds, we can now go ahead and rank them. So we'll number one for KF, two for acetic acid, three for methyl formate, and then four for butane. So we're ranking the strongest intermolecular forces that's present in each of these compounds. The final answer, ranking the boiling point from highest to lowest is potassium fluoride, followed by acetic acid, methyl formate, and finally butane. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. I really appreciate it and I hope the video helps. Subscribe if you would like to see more chemistry videos like this. I'll see you in the next one.